In the previous two lectures, we discussed about the response spectrum method of analysis and uh, tried to explain to you how the response spectrum method of analysis uh, is developed uh, from the uh, principles of the uh, normal mode theory, uh, the uh, equivalent static loads which are calculated in each mode of vibration, how they are uh, developed. Uh, then uh, we solved a problem uh, for single point excitation system to illustrate the method of analysis uh, for a single point excitation system. At the end, uh, we started uh, the extension of the method for uh, obtaining the response spectrum method of an or applying the response spectrum method of analysis for multi support excitation system. Uh, in that, uh, we started uh, saying in about the assumptions that are additionally used for uh, extending the response spectrum method of analysis uh, for multi support excitation. Those assumptions are the assumptions that the future earthquake is represented by an averaged smooth response spectrum and a power spectral density function that is obtained from an ensemble of time histories. Then lack of correlation between ground motions at two points that is at the two supports, two different supports where the excitations are caused due to earthquake is represented by a coherence function. Many expressions for the coherence functions were discussed uh, in seismic input. One can choose any one of those coherence functions. The third assumption is the most important assumption that is the peak factor in each mode of vibration and the peak factor for the total responses are assumed to be the same. We have come across the term peak factor in relation to the seismic inputs for structures for the case of random ground excitation. The peak factor is a factor which is multiplied with the standard deviation or the RMS value of the ground motion in order to obtain the peak value of the ground motion, better it is called expected peak value of the ground motion. Then expression for that was given in uh, seismic input. So, in each mode of vibration similarly, if we wish to find out the peak value of the response, then one should multiply a peak factor with the standard deviation of the response for the uh, mode uh, for the response for that mode of vibration. This peak factor is obtained from the power spectral density function of the response in that mode. Once we get the power spectral density functions for the uh, responses in different modes of vibration, from that one can calculate not only the standard deviation of the modal response, but also the peak factors associated with that. Multiplying the peak factors with the standard deviation of the response, one can get the peak value of the response. Uh, thus, the peak factors are involved in each mode of vibration. That is also a peak factor for the total response in the structural coordinate system. This assumption means that all the peak factors in different modes of vibration, the peak factor which is associated with the total response of the system, all of them are assumed to be the same. Therefore, if we find out the peak factor for any mode of vibration, then that peak factor can be utilized throughout the analysis. Next, what is required is a relationship 
between the ground displacement spectrum and the power spectral density function of response. This relationship is required because we wish to find out also the power spectral density function of the ground motion from the specified response spectrum. That is necessary for obtaining the coherence function, the cross power spectral density function between the two responses which are required in the derivation of this particular analysis. Mean peak value of any response quantity R uh, consists of two portions. First part is the pseudostatic response due to the displacements of the support. The second part is the dynamic response of the structure with respect to supports. The first part is obtained by applying unit displacement at each support successively finding out the responses to non-support degrees of freedom. So, that gives the pseudostatic response due to the displacements of the support. They are uh, some coefficients and these coefficients are stored in the uh, program so that this coefficient later on can be multiplied with the ground displacements that is taking place at different supports. The second part straight away comes from the response analysis of the structure or the dynamic response analysis of the structure with respect to the support. Now, the using normal mode theory, the uncoupled dynamic equation of motion for each mode of vibration can be written by equations like equation 5.18, where we have the ith modal equation providing the ith generalized displacement j i. There is a term beta k i, which is the mode participation factor. This we discussed in previously when we are solving the problem in time domain. There we have seen that if it is a case of multi support excitation, then there is not an unique value of the mode participation factor like single point excitation system, but the mode participation factor in a particular mode is associated also with the support. So, for the k -th support excitation, there is a mode participation factor in the i th mode that is called beta k i and that is given by phi i t m r k divided by phi i t m phi i. r k is the column vector or the k -th column vector of the r matrix that is uh, the influence coefficient matrix that we multiply with the mass matrix then multiply to the x double dot g to find out the earthquake force or in other words for multi degree freedom system with multi support excitation on the right hand side we write minus m r then x double dot g. Uh, so, r k is the kth column of the R, r matrix. If the response of the single degree freedom oscillator to a specific excitation for a particular support is u double dot k. For that, if the response is z bar k i, then one can write down the response or generalized response in the ith mode is equal to the summation of beta k i multiplied by z bar k i, because z by k z bar k i is the response in the ith mode produced due to the kth support excitation. So, if we sum up for all the support excitation, then we get the value of the z i in a particular mode of vibration. So, this z i 
is the dynamic response of the system with respect to the support. The total response is given by the equation 5.21 where uh, the response RT is uh, given by this equation that is AK into UKT uh, summation over the supports and then this is the uh, phi bar i z i t that is the mode shape coefficient corresponding to the response quantity of interest. So, this response quantity of interest need not be displacement could be bending moment, shear force or any other quantity of interest. So, the phi bar i k will be the mode shape coefficient for that response. Then we multiply that coefficient with z i t and sum it over all the modes. So, that gives the response of that, uh, that particular response of the system and that is the dynamic response with respect to the support. This part is the pseudo static response part and as we as I explained before this a k coefficient that is the uh, responses that is obtained at the non support degrees of freedom due to unit displacement applied at each support that is stored and that is the coefficient a k. So, that a k is multiplied by the ground motion u k to get the pseudo uh, static component of the response at all non support degrees of freedom. This a k uh, coefficient could be also obtained for any response quantity of interest if this uh, R t is a response other than the displacement then we use those values of a k uh, which you have obtained for the response quantity of interest. Substituting z i t from this equation we obtain finally equation 5.22 and this 5.22 equation can be written in a compact form uh, in matrix notation that is R t becomes equal to A t u t plus phi b t z bar t where phi bar uh, phi v z bar are vectors of size m into s. Say uh, the number of support is 3 and the number of modes that we consider is 2. In that case the phi b vector would typically look uh, like this that is uh, the phi bar 1 beta 1 1 phi bar 1 beta 2 1 phi bar 1 beta 3 1. So, this beta 1 1 beta 2 1 and beta 3 1 are the mode participation factors coming from the 3 modes for mode 1. Then we have phi bar 2 beta 1 2 phi bar 2 beta 2 2 and phi bar 2 beta 3 2 uh, they are the again the mode participation factors coming from supports 1, 2 and 3 for the second mode. Similarly, the z vector consists of z bar 1 1, z bar 2 1 and z bar 3 1 that is the responses coming from the support 1 to mode 1 the z bar 2 1 indicates the response that is coming from the second support to mode 1 uh, z bar 3 similarly is the response that is coming to uh, the mode 1 from support 3. The last 3 terms that is z bar 1 2, z bar 2 2 and z bar 3 2 they are uh, similarly the responses the mod, uh, modal responses that is coming for the second mode from the 3 supports. Then we assume that R t, U t and z bar t to be random processes. 
the PSDF of RT then is given by equation 5.25 and this equation is shown over here. The reason for assuming RT, UT and Z bar T to be random process is that the excitation is an excitation which is assumed to be a coming uh, to be a response uh, to be an excitation coming from an ensemble of time history of records. That ensemble of time history of record uh, is characterized by a stationary random process as well as a smooth response spectrum is obtained for that ensemble time history of records. And therefore, we could relate the response spectrum of displacement with the power spectral density function of the ground acceleration and a relationship of that type was shown previously and that relationship is used uh, to obtain the power spectral density function of the ground acceleration from a given response spectrum of displacement. So, once we assume that RT, UT and Z bar T are the, are the quantities which are random quantities or random processes, then one can write down straight away the power spectral density function of the response by uh, this equation and the basis of this equation has been discussed before while discussing the spectral analysis of response for a specified ground uh, for a specified power spectral density function of ground excitation. Uh, phi A T A C U A that comes from the first part of the equation that is A T U T. The second part phi B T S Z bar Z bar phi beta that is coming from the second part of the equation and these two parts uh, are the cross terms that is uh, the cross power spectral density function that exists between u and z bar and z bar and u. So, once we have uh, this expression for SRR then one can perform an integration of this power spectral density functions. After we integrate these power, power spectral density function, uh, then one can get the standard deviation of these quantities. Those standard deviations are multiplied by the peak factor in order to get the mean peak values of the responses and from that mean peak value of the responses one can get the mean peak value of the response quantity of interest. So, once we do that then the expected maximum value of the response quantity of interest that is E max RT that can be written finally in this form B T L E U B plus B T L U Z bar phi B D plus phi T B D L Z Z bar phi B D plus phi T B D L Z bar U B, where B and phi B D are the vectors like this that is B vector is equal to A 1 into U P 1, A 2 into U P 2 and so on. So, if there are S number of S supports then uh, it will go up to A S into U P S. Phi T beta D is given by this expression phi bar 1 beta 1 1 multiplied by D 1 1 then phi bar 1 beta 2 1 d 2 1 and 
that is how it goes up to 5 R 1, beta S 1, D S 1. Then for the last series of terms will be 5 R m, beta 1 1, D 1 m and the last term of the series will be 5 R m, beta S 1 multiplied by D S m. Now, let me let's explain the terms of this B T and phi T B D. A 1, A 2, A 3 are the coefficients of the response or the pseudo-static coefficient of the response quantity that we have discussed before. U P 1 is the peak ground displacement for the support excitation 1. U P 2 is the peak ground uh, displacement corresponding to support excitation 2 and so on. In uh, these expression phi bar 1 represents the first mode shape coefficient for the response quantity of interest that we can obtain or that we have discussed before also. Beta 1 1 is the mode participation factor that is coming from the support 1 to mode 1. D 1 1 is a displacement uh, response spectrum ordinate corresponding to the first time period and the first support excitation. That is we are assuming that the response spectrums at support 1, support 2, support 3 and so on these response spectrums as if are different, uh, then D11 uh, represents the response spectrum ordinate for time period for the first mode and for the response spectrum that we have obtained or that is given for the support excitation 1. So, similarly beta 2 1 is the uh, mode participation factor that is coming to the first mode from the second support and D21 is the, the displacement response spectrum for the first uh, uh, for the, for the uh, first mode uh, time period coming from the uh, support excitation 2. So, that way these terms basically can be easily ex explained and can be known that is uh, again for example, phi bar 1 here uh, is uh, the mode shape coefficient uh, for the response quantity of interest in the first mode and beta S 1 represents the mode participation factor which is uh, coming uh, to the mode 1 coming from support S and D S 1 represents the uh, displacement response spectrum ordinate for the time period for mode 1 coming from um, the ex, uh, support excitation at S. And that is how we are writing D i j and this d i j means that the response spectrum ordinate coming to the or corresponding to the time period j and its contribution coming from the support i. If we assume that d i j that is the support excitations for all the supports have the same power spectral density function and they have the same uh, response spectrum or displacement response spectrum, then d i j simply becomes equal to d i omega j xi j which means that uh, for a given response spectrum which will be uh, remain constant for all the supports. Uh, for that 
the response spectrum ordinate corresponding to the time period uh, which will be the 2 pi by omega j and for uh, the damping ratio j uh, j. So, for that we take the displaced response spectrum ordinate and thus d 1 1, d 2 1, d s 1, d 1 m etcetera all of them uh, they basically become simplified and we have uh, for each mode we have a one particular value of the displacement response spectrum ordinate. The elements of uh, the um, correlation matrices A u u, A u z bar and L z z bar are given in equations 5.28, 5.29 and 5.30. L uh, u i uh, u j uh, are the elements of L u u matrix and it equal to 1 by sigma u i into sigma u j and uh, integration of the s u i u j d omega in which sigma u i is the standard deviation of the displacement or ground displacement at support i and sigma u j uh, is the standard deviation of the ground displacement at support j. S u i u j is the cross power spectral density function uh, between the ground displacement at support i and support j. L u i z bar k j uh, are the elements of L u z bar matrix and uh, they are equal to 1 by sigma u i into sigma z bar k j in which sigma u i is the standard deviation of the ground displacement at the i th support and uh, the sigma z bar k j uh, is the uh, generalized or uh, standard deviation of the generalized displacement for mode uh, j coming from support k that is uh, this z bar uh, is obtained for the jth mode using beta k j that is uh, the mode participation factor uh, beta k j that we had obtained before that is uh, equation 5.19. Then uh, the uh, uh, within the integration uh, we have H j star which is the complex conjugate of the frequency response function for the jth mode and uh, S u i uh, z bar uh, uh, S u i uh, u double dot k uh, that is uh, equal to the cross power spectral density function between the displacement at the i th support and the acceleration at the k th support. The L z bar k i z bar L j uh, they are the elements of L z bar z bar matrix and are equal to 1 by sigma z bar uh, uh, k i into sigma z bar L j uh, where sigma z bar k i is the standard deviation of the generalized uh, displacement for the i th mode and uh, the k th support uh, that is uh, which is obtained uh, using uh, beta k i. Uh, similarly, sigma z bar l j is the uh, standard deviation of the generalized displacement for the j th mode uh, from the l th support. Uh, within the integration we have h i h j star h i is a complex frequency response function for the i th mode h j is the 
the complex conjugate of the uh, frequency response function for the jth mode and s u bar k l and uh, u, u double dot k and u double dot l uh, they are the cross power spectral density function between the accelerations at the kth support and the lth support. Now, with this uh, uh, equations defined and after we uh, integrate uh, these equations the elements of the uh, matrices can be obtained. Uh, in those equations uh, what we have to find out is a c u i u k uh, uh, which is equal to 1 by omega square uh, a c u i to the power half a c u k to the power half and coherence function uh, i k uh, that is uh, the uh, it takes care of the uh, partial correlation between the ground displacements at the i h support and the k h support. Uh, since uh, the power spectral density function of the ground displacements for all the supports are the same uh, therefore, s uh, uh, u i to the power half s u k to the power half uh, the multiplication of these two turns out to be s u double dot g that is the power spectral density uh, s u g that is the power spectral density of the ground specified ground displacement. Then uh, we have s u y uh, u uh, double dot uh, uh, s u y uh, u j uh, that is equal to 1 by omega to the power 4 uh, into s u y to the power half s u j to the power half uh, multiplied by coherence function i comma j uh, and which uh, again turns out to be equal to coherence uh, i j divided by omega to the power 4 uh, into s uh, u double dot g. Uh, I am sorry the in the previous equation it was uh, s u i u double dot k. So, that is uh, uh, given as coherence uh, i k divided by omega square into s u double dot g. And finally, uh, we have s u double dot k and u s u double dot l uh, that uh, turns out to be simply coherence k l uh, multiplied by s u double dot g. So, uh, in terms of s u double dot g and a coherence function uh, uh, defined uh, to take care of the partial correlation between the ground uh, motions, uh, one can obtain uh, these uh, terms s u i s u double s u i uh, u double dot k s u i uh, u j and s u double dot k u double dot l. Now, for a single train of seismic wave uh, d i j uh, becomes uh, simply the uh, value of the uh, displacement response spectrum uh, for the earthquake uh, which is uh, given uh, in this equation 5.27 c uh, there d i j uh, is equal to becomes equal to d i omega i xi i uh, for the single train of earthquake uh, that is uh, it has an unique uh, displacement spectrum. And, uh, uh, s u double dot g uh, can be obtained uh, from the specified uh, displacement uh, spectrum from the relationship that we have discussed before. Uh, so, uh, for a given displacement spectrum of an earthquake and an additionally uh, specified coherence function to take care of the partial correlation between the ground motions, uh, one can now obtain uh, all the uh, terms necessary uh, to calculate the, uh, uh, the mean peak value of the response of the system. And thus, for a multi support excitation case, 
the uh, one can find out the um, values of the expected uh, uh, peak value of the responses uh, using you know, the same response spectrum method of analysis. Only uh, thing that is required over here uh, is that uh, in addition to defining the displacement response function, we have to define a coherence function and a, a relationship uh, that we equate uh, the uh, acceleration uh, power spectral density function uh, in terms of the displacement uh, response spectrum of uh, the arc pack. Now, if only the relative peak displacement uh, is required, then the third term of equation 5.26 uh, that is uh, required. Uh, uh, so, uh, we uh, uh, the third term uh, uh, only gives the relative displacement, but if we take all the terms uh, in equation 5.26, then this will give the absolute displacement. The uh, steps for uh, obtaining uh, the uh, response spectrum method of a response spectrum analysis for multi support excitation using MATLAB uh, is uh, given in the book. In the MATLAB, one can develop uh, the method that is described. Over here, the first step would be to obtain a matrix R, uh, which is uh, constructed uh, as uh, we have uh, discussed before. Then from the R matrix, one can take out the R k vector that is for the k support and use it for finding out the mode participation factor for the mode for the k support. Then beta k i is uh, that is a beta k i that is obtained and this beta k i is obtained for all the supports from 1 to s and for all the modes 1 to m. Next uh, phi t beta phi t b d they are obtained from the equations and in obtaining uh, phi t uh, beta d we require the ordinates of the displacement response spectrum at uh, different modes corresponding to the time periods of those no, uh, modes. We also require the mode shape coefficient for the response quantity of interest as well as we require the mode participation factor for a particular mode coming for a from a particular support. So, all these uh, ones, these quantities are known. So, therefore, phi t b beta d and phi t beta can be constructed. Once we have uh, these uh, two uh, vectors, next vector that is required is the a vector that is the influence coefficient vector uh, which comes from the pseudo static analysis and that can be stored for a particular response the pseudo static vector and um, for the displacement the pseudo static vector they could be different. Next is to construct a vector b and this uh, vector b uh, we have uh, is uh, shown in expression 5.27 uh, this vector b requires the uh, peak ground displacement at different supports, but this peak ground displacement at different supports are assumed to be the same because we have the same train of earthquake moving through all the supports. This can be obtained from the specified power spectral density function and for the support excitation and then converting it to the power spectral density function for displacement. The area under that curve give the standard deviation 
and that standard deviation can be multiplied by a peak factor in order to obtain the peak value of the or expected uh, value of the ground displacement. The matrices LUU, LU bar, uh, UZ bar and LZZ bar, uh, they require uh, basically uh, the integration of the cross power spectral density function uh, multiplied by the frequency response function for each mode which was shown in equation 5.28 to 5.30 and in that we had seen that we require uh, also uh, the, uh, the standard deviation of the generalized displacement in a particular mode for the excitation uh, or the kth excitation or the excitation at the kth support. So, that uh, uh, standard deviation can be obtained by assuming uh, the power spectral density function or not, not assuming uh, by uh, op obtaining the spectral analysis for the specified power spectral density function of the ground motion and from that one can get the power spectral density function of the generalized displacement, the area under the curve will give the standard deviation. The cross power spectral density function that is required between the displacement at one support with the acceleration at the other support, the cross power spectral density function between uh, the displacements at two supports and the uh, cross power spectral density function between the acceleration and two supports which are required in those integrations, they are obtained again by a set of equation which can be finally represented in the form of a coherence function and the specified power spectral density function of the ground acceleration. Coherence function is additionally provided for this problem. So, one can develop a program in easily in the MATLAB uh, for finding out the, the response or the mean peak response for uh, systems having multi support excitation and uh, subjected to a set of ground motions which can be represented with the help of an averaged response spectrum which can be again converted to a ground acceleration of spectrum through an empirical relationship. We illustrate uh, the method with the help of a problem. Uh, this is a problem uh, if we uh, recall is a problem for a three support frame that is example 3.8. We had a a two story frame with three supports. The non support degrees of freedom are 2 and therefore, the mode shapes are 2 by 2 mode shape matrix. And since we are wanting to find out the expected peak value of the displacements, then phi bar also becomes the same matrix. The R matrix for the multi support excitation case was computed before for this problem and R is given by this matrix. The three frequencies are two frequencies are omega 1 and omega 2. So, they are uh, also given A t that is the pseudo static coefficients at the uh, non support degrees of freedom coming from all the three excitations, they are same as R, therefore, A t is same as uh, R. This is the phi t beta matrix, and the phi t beta matrix will uh, have these uh, sets of this is the first set. 5 r 1 1 beta 1 1, 5 r 1 1 beta 2 1, 5 r 1 1 beta 3 1, 
all these things I have been explained before and phi bar 1 to phi bar 2 2 or uh, beta 2 1, beta 1 2 etc. Uh, they can be all obtained. The phi t beta d matrix that is computed uh, over here. So, it requires uh, as I told you before the ordinates of the response displacement response spectrum then phi terms and uh, the terms for the mode participation factor for a particular mode. The displacement response spectrum which is assumed to be the same for all the three supports because it is the same train of earthquake that is passing through all the three supports that is obtained for the time periods corresponding to, to, uh, to these two frequencies and they are 0 0.056 and 0 0.011. Coherence function or coherence fun matrix can be obtained easily. These will not be 0, this will be 1, 1, 1 and rho 1 and rho 2 will be minus 5 omega by 2 pi and minus 10 omega by 2 pi because it is assumed that there is a 5 second time lag between the supports. So, between the first support and the second support this is the or this will be the value of rho 1 we have computed it also before also oh, and uh, for first uh, support and the third support uh, the rho 2 value will be equal to minus 10 omega 2 pi. So, plugging in the values of rho 1, rho 2 etc. in this uh, coherence matrix, we get the complete coherence matrix. LUU, LU bar, UZ bar matrix, they are again computed uh, that is the that integrations were performed and we finally obtained each uh, of these elements of those matrices and constructed this matrix LUU. Similarly, uh, the matrix LUZ bar uh, that was constructed and uh, LZZ bar matrix also was constructed. With the help of these matrices, finally we obtained the mean peak values of the displacements uh, that is for the displacement 1, the mean peak value was obtained as 0 0.106 and for the second uh, non-support degree of freedom it was 0 0.099 meter. When we obtained the relative displacement for uh, the response 1, then the relative displacement mean peak value of the relative displacement came out to be 0 0.045 and for the second non-support degree of freedom, the mean peak value of the displacement came as 0 0.022. Note that uh, we can obtain both the mean peak values of the total response and the mean peak value of the relative displacement. The mean peak value of the total displacement means the relative displacement plus the pseudostatic component they are taken together and for that we obtain the mean peak values and the relative displacements they come purely from the modal displacement z bar multiplied by the mode shape factor. The general expression that we had shown in the uh, development of the method uh, they are if we retain only the uh, this term then we get the if we retain only the third term and ignore all other terms then we get the straight away the relative displacements or the mean peak values of the relative displacements. So, that is uh, what was done over here to get the value of the or mean peak value of the relative displacements. We also solve the problem assuming that the ground motions are perfectly correlated. In that case, I u u, I z bar z bar 
and i u z bar uh, they take uh, this particular form using those uh, we obtain the you know, values of the mean peak relative displacement by response spectrum method of analysis for u1 and u2 they turn out to be like this for the time history analysis for the same problem and for the same L centro earthquake record for which the power spectral density function and the corresponding displacement response spectrum were used the, that gave us a, a values which are 0 0.081 and 0 0.041 and we can see that uh, these uh, two values match quite well. Thus, uh, in spite of the different uh, assumptions uh, that have been uh, considered in the development of the response spectrum method of analysis for multi support excitation case, we see that the results that we obtain from the response spectrum method of analysis compare quite well with the time history analysis. We uh, explain the same method with the help of another example and uh, in that uh, if you recall we solved a problem which uh, has a, which was a uh, beam problem resting on three spring supports that is uh, the problem this problem uh, this was a beam which is resting on a soil. Soil is uh, replaced by the spring and dash dashpots. This has a spring constant case, case and case and the damping constants are CS for the soil. The structural damping for the structure is taken as 5 percent. These are the masses which are lumped at the 3 degrees of freedom. Translations are the uh, 3 degrees of freedom. Rotation is uh, condensed out. There is a time lag which is assumed uh, between the supports that time lag is 2.5 second. CS value is given as 0 0.6 meter and KS value is given as 48 this is not meter m and this is k s is equal to 48 m. The structural damping matrix is obtained as c is equal to alpha m plus beta k. The c bar matrix that is uh, the damping matrix considering the soil damping that turns out to be this. Note that once we add the soil damping to the structural damping, the damping becomes a non-classical damping. So, this problem is a problem of non-classical damping. Therefore, to use the response spectrum method of analysis for this becomes really difficult. However, uh, by making an uh, approximation that is uh, by diagonalizing the damping matrix uh, that is the modal damping matrix or in other words phi t c bar phi. For that the off diagonal terms are ignored and with the help of that we solve the uh, same uh, or this problem and obtain the responses.